everybody, it's Cinnamon Cunier Archerfa, and today we're going to paint the long-awaited IT painting that you guys have been requesting for a year. I is my husband, John. Hey, guys. Uh, he's going to be tracking with the cameras, reading your comments in chat the, during the live stream. If you have a question, you put it in all caps. I promise you, we won't think you're yelling. The people with the wrenches, moderators, sometimes they'll know the answer and they may give you a link or they may give you where that information is. And sometimes your question might end up in the show. So that's always interesting. This is quite a painting to have to do today. I'm doing this on an 11 by 14, um, art board it's like a, a little board that i get in packs at the store and you can see it here i get these uh, artist loft is the brand over here i just have my black paint out but listen guys if you check the description below it gives you a link to the web page where the traceable is because if you don't draw you can still do this painting you can just put that image on the canvas and transfer it on um also all of the materials which are in the description are on that page and also down below you sometimes you got to click more and so that's where you find it i have one wish but one on this canvas and it is completely dedicated to georgie which is that all kids everywhere are safe just safety for children around the world for all of our children no matter where we live no matter who we are our kids should be safe we all deserve that in our world i think that's my I, wish i agree all right so I'm gonna get me a big and hefty brush. Let's see what's my big and hefty brush that's currently clean. Oh, I have a number 30. <laughs> so the reason I'm picking this is just cause it's large. Um, this is a bright, it's for acrylic painting. I'm gonna go ahead and get it wet and drag off the extra water. And I'm gonna load it with the black. When I'm loading a brush, I like to flip it and drag it out. And what that does is it pulls the paint into the belly of the brush. And I'm gonna paint this whole canvas black. So in a minute, this panel here, the surface is gonna disappear into this background. Yes, it will. Like a black hole. But that's okay. So this is my Mars black. Mars black tends to um, dry a uh, matte, whereas carbon black will often dry gloss. And this is a little warmer, which means it has a slightly imperceptible, almost brown tone to it. Whereas carbon, which we sometimes use, is a little bit cooler, so almost has a, a blue feel to it. Just a weird thing you might not know mm. that now you do. Don't you? I, I do know. You do now know? I do now know what I did not know. And we're going to have picture in picture, so you're not going to have to just remember what this looked like in your head. What is known cannot be unknown. <laughs> That's not true, though. <laughs> I've forgotten quite a lot of stuff. Oops. You, you have the the color, the non-color shifting, color shifting art Sherpa pan. Yeah, it's true. I did. I'm not actually going to use this thing the whole time. John, I'm going to turn the hair dryer on, but these do work just fine to dry. <laughs> but I think I'm going to knock it off today. Are you okay. guys ready to do this painting? First of all, who can see the canvas? It's. It'll show up in just a second here. John's no, no, going to talk you, to you. You can see it. I can still see it here. Yeah. So I was going to talk to you guys for a second, though. Okay. He's going to talk to you. Talk to you. All right. We're going to talk. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing? Um, I should go over and see. Hello, everyone. Yes, there's quite a few of you here. So, oh, I will tell you. Um, use your, if you're going to use something other than a uh, color, sh the color shifting, non-color shifting Sherpa pan. If you're using like a hair, a, a hair dryer or anything, use it on the lowest heat setting because heat can really do damage to uh, some of your paint, especially student paints. It can cause color shift and some shrinkage. Pro paints, you're not going to have so much that issue, um, uh, but it's just good habit to not use heat if, uh, if at all possible. <sighs> so ready to do this painting. Is everybody ready? They are ready. Now I'm gonna sketch this in and I'm going to put this in so you guys can see how that's constructed. So many of you asked me how that's done. Um, but remember, this isn't the time to go, well, I don't draw and I can't do it because drawing is an art skill, painting is an art skill. They're not necessarily always connected in the way people tend to think that they are. So it's sort of interesting to realize that you don't have to draw that well to paint well. It's one of those strange little facts of art that that maybe doesn't get enough publicity out there. Yeah. yeah there's a there's a whole I lot of things it. like you don't have to know how to make paint in order to be a painter. Well, 
<laughs> also true. Also true. And you should probably do a lot of research before making paint because some pigments are quite dangerous. I'm... Am I? Oh, I, I didn't know where you had put my um, picture in picture. So, okay. All right. It's going to be there. All right. Then I'm going to go the other way. <laughs> Sherpas. I'm not sure what the Sherpa is looking for here. We'll give you everything. But you know what? I can, I can mess the Sherpa. Because I can move things around. Oh, darn it. Move it over here. You know what I put out? No, what did you put out? I put out ultramarine. And you know what we don't need? You don't need ultramarine? I don't need any ultramarine. You could palette knife it off. I would if I had a palette knife. But what I wasn't do? using a palette you knife. Have packets of them. And I need phthalo blue paint. So we're going to pretend this is. So this is supposed to be phthalo green, which it is. And this is supposed to be phthalo blue, which it is not. So John's going to bring me over some phthalo blue. And I'm going to scrape this off and put it aside somewhere because it's not the blue that I want. And I'll put out some other colors like. Yeah, I just need phthalo blue. Yeah, that's all I need. Some phthalo blue. I'm going to put out both of my browns, my burnt sienna, my burnt umber, because I like my dirt from the earth burnt. We heard that's red shade. <laughs> There's different shades. Red shade? Why don't you check uh, the tables? Here, I'll be right back. I'm just going to look where they were put. This is crazy. You go say hi. No. <laughs> what is going on? Never mind. I give up. I'm going to use red shade. I mean, I do. <gasps> yes, yellow, blue, green shade. <sighs> okay, guys. So, so, yes, color is that important to me. Sorry about that. <laughs> A little delay. Well, we find the well, right color Well, I mean, in all paint. fairness, the labeling on these looks a lot alike. And until you look at the swatches, you don't really even see the difference. Yeah. So it's just one of those things that can happen to you. I promise you. I can show you how to do this painting. All right. I'm going to put out some Indian yellow for this. One of my very favorite colors. And I'm going to put out both my uh, zinc white and my titanium white. Now, if you're very, very new to painting and you're like, wait, two whites, what's the point of that? Zinc white is very light, transparent, and doesn't alter the hue of something very much. Whereas titanium white is very, very tinting, and it alters the hue of something a lot. It's powerful. It's powerful. So it's nice to have both kind of sitting there on your palette. And I'm going to go ahead and treat myself to some real cadmium red medium hue. You could use naphthol red medium. If that's what you have in your paint kit, if you got one of those uh, 48 paint kit things mm -hmm. and all you have is the naphthol, that's completely fine to use. It'll work really well. Naphthol red medium as an alternative to this. All right, let some air get in that paint. The destroyer of acrylic paint is essentially air, so that's always good to avoid. Now, I'm going to use this kitchen sponge. This is just a regular cellulose sponge, and I'm going to do a couple effects. I'm going to take a little bit of my brown here, my burnt umber, and a little bit of my green. And I'm going to sort of drag this down, and this is going to age and mold my wall. Let's oh, mold our nice. walls in the sewer Gonna where Pennywise look... lives. You know what? You know what I have to say about Pennywise? I don't know. You didn't really. You weren't really a Stephen King fan. No, but. <laughs> Not to like call you out or nothing. No, no. But uh, the, those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live down there too. And. You, you know, know what? I, if it saves Georgie, I'll take it. I have uh, my whole life been pretty scarred by what happened to Georgie, which is why the boat isn't in this piece. If you're wondering, why is the boat not in, I just dropped my sponge. Why is the boat not in this piece? Well, because Georgie's getting away today, guys. I don't know, time lords, whatever it takes, but Georgie's gonna get away. Tell you you what. can see that I'm just dragging this down. I'm dragging it from the top towards the bottom. Here it is on the sponge. Look how I'm loading this up. I get a little bit of the green. I get a little bit of the brown. You can see they're just loosely intermingled, and I'm going to bring this down. I'm not trying to paint the wall a bright green. I'm trying to create an effect that you in no way can see on camera. Oh, yeah, you can. Look. Okay. You can. You can see. I can. You, see the, yeah, you, you can, can see it. It's too bright. 
but you can, uh, both on both views you can see the green and brown excellent and black. it's subtle it's subtle but you can also see the difference from the blacks of the background and the for and the and the surface Okay, that's an important thing yeah. because sometimes when we're close to canvas, there can be uh, dark, subtle differences that have a big visual impact. Let's dry this so we can sketch our stuff out. Yeah, so while she's sketching that in, I'm going to go back. I'm a huge Turtles fan too. And you know, Casey Jones would not let Pennywise stand. He would give that dude a total face full of hockey stick. So... TMNT fans. Okay, so now we're back to Sherpa Ing. Hey guys. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. I didn't totally geek out while you were gone. Did you not? Nope. That's okay. I know you did. Next part I want to say to you I'm going to draw a circle, but something you might not know <laughs> if you haven't painted for a while. <laughs> what? But I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to draw a circle. Really I'm excited! I'm I'm I'm, draw a circle. I'm here for it. Here's what you might not know: it is not uncommon to be really challenged to draw a circle. It is really normal, and if you go to draw your circle, this is kids chalk, the kind that you use on chalkboards because it disappears easily with just a little uh, water and a damp brush. Um, if you go to draw your circle and you're like, "That is an amoeba," or some other non-circle shape, it is okay to just put something that's round like a jar or a lid and just trace around it. That is a completely allowed move. But I'm going to do the little sewer opening where I'm going to pop Pennywise. And it goes almost all the way to the top. Up here, it goes almost all the way to the top. It comes almost all the way over here. And I need room for the bricks. I've got it just past the midpoint over here and just past the midpoint there. So once I know the eventual kind of size, I do this weird thing when I'm freehanding where I go around and around and around. If I'm not tracing, that's actually weirdly how I find my circles. There's a weird trick that you can do with a pinking spin the whole paper, but that only works if it's flat. And then there's another really fun one I used to do with a string. But I just find my circle. And once I have it, I'm like, oh, that's really good. Now at the bottom here, about a third of the way up, I'm going to make a nice horizontal line. That's the bottom of where everything is going to be coming, happening, working out. And I've got a little bit of water that comes down here. There is a vertical waterfall straight down. The thing that will throw your water off is if you take it to the side like this. You just want to make sure that it's vertical. And then the stream is going to come out a little bit. It wiggles to the right, comes out, makes a little wiggle to the left. I might even need to space that and then finds its way out. Now closest to us, it's going to be its widest, right? So it'll be its widest. And then as it gets further away, it'll bisect in to where the water is. So that's sort of how you create the illusion of perspective of a stream flowing up to there. So now we've got that basically laid out. Then we've got a balloon, right? So let's go to this. We all know a balloon is not a circle. It's almost like a teardrop shape. They tend to be bigger at the nose and travel down. So that's sort of how you get that shape. If it's too pulled, you can pull it in like that. Like I made mine a little bit too long. And then I'm going to say that there's a little bit of a string that comes down. And I'll show you a real cool trick on how to shade that. So once that chalk is in, I sort of know where everything is. Right? I'm not going to put in Pennywise's face yet. I'm going to put in all the other little elements that are around Pennywise. So that's going to work out really, really well for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a number four bright of any kind. So this is what was near me. This is a number four ruby satin. And I'm going to grab a little of my burnt sienna, a little of my burnt umber together. And I might add a little of my black into it. So I don't want it bright, right? Because we're in the sewer. So things are not that bright. And I'm going to come here to the bottom of the waterfall. And this is an, this number four, if you look at the size of it, it's about a quarter of an inch. So to get the bricks, I just use this to create that effect. And I just pull it out in a little stroke. And I'm going to go around this whole thing. Isn't that cool? 
I am not a bricklayer, but I will paint those little suckers in. See how we're doing? Oh yeah, this is looking great. So you just go around and you just enjoy that process. Painting little bricks. This this little technique, even though this is on a very, very scary painting, works on just a lot of different types of paintings. If you're doing like street scenes or architectural elements around windows, it's very, very effective. I think it's I think the hardest thing for me is to space things out well. Yeah. And kind of keep the illusion of these being about the same size. But you don't have to actually be that perfect. People tend to take a painting in, in totality. Um, for the most part, you've always got nitpickers, mm -hmm. right? You've got somebody who hasn't said anything unless they've got a criticism or a point to make. Because that's how they uh, sort information. <laughs> and, and that's what they like to do to help you out. While you're being creative, it happens. Sometimes, not, not, my, not my husband, but sometimes we marry those people. I say this because I watch all the posts in my Facebook group and I listen to everybody's story. You mean you're saying that I never nitpick you and I'm the perfect husband and you're saying that on a recording? So I can no, I'm definitely not saying that. Okay, yeah. checking. For the record, let the record show I'm in no way saying that about anybody that I am married to. So I'm going to just bring this around. And that lets all those little bricks start to really show there. They're quite dark at this stage, but we'll do a little dry brushing, you know, around those to get those to really, really show up. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my deep blue. And I'm going to just go ahead and pull this down. Oh, I think I did something wrong. What did you do? It doesn't matter. I'll fix it after. You always fix it. I will find a way. You, you do find a way through. I will find a way through. Okay, pulling this down. Let me just pull this down. Dragging the brush down. Dragging the brush down. Get that sort of little, slightly blue little effect. And then I bring the little bright to the left and then I push down and I come over and I push down and it kind of makes the stream event for me. At this stage, I don't want to do it again here, but I'll come here and again, follow that out. See how I'm using the brush yes. to make the bend in this little uh, sewage runoff. We say stream, but really it's a sewage runoff because Pennywise lives underneath dairy and uh, like to lurk in the sewers, and I really don't understand why people, I mean, I, 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 I know that. they have a reason why people are supposedly staying in dairy, but I'm still not getting it. I can only imagine the sewer under a dairy <laughs> smells fantastic. I bet it's a special, special gift. A special, special gift. Now, while this is still wet, I'm going to get a bigger and bristly kind of dry brush. Um, I'm going to grab this brush. It's an eight. You could have a bigger brush. You could have a smaller brush but I want something that's not too big and I'm gonna use my zinc and I'm gonna load the brush with my pure zinc and it's going to slightly highlight some of this. I'm gonna drag this down in a vertical stroke. I'm gonna try not to wander to either side. I'm gonna have a very light pressure. I'm not gonna be pressing hard into the canvas. I'm gonna be dragging this lightly with just a gentle pressure. There we go. Just a gentle pressure. There we go. See that right there? So now that water is starting to flow down. I'm going to load up just a little bit of that white into my brush again. And in the center of the stream, I'm going to come just down. And I'm going to use the brush again to create those reflections. See how we're doing? And I want to leave some of the dark blue, so I don't want to take that out very much. I want that to remain there. I'm going to rinse out fairly well. And you can grab a little bit of your black and put it into your blue. If you need to, you can straighten up your water. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Straighten up water. You can straighten the water up. Gravity works. Gravity works. 
And where you want to show these different little effects, you can absolutely straighten that water up. I'm going to put out a little more black, like you do. Like you do. Like you do. And I had so much blue problems today. I'll tell you what, clearly, I don't know where any of my stuff is. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt umber and uh, some of my phthalo blue and green together with just a little burnt umber. It makes a dark kind of like sewer, I don't know, like sewer growth. And I'm going to stipple. Growth. We're stippling along this little water bank. Stipple, stipple, stipple. You know, I believe you would stipple a sewer growth. I would stipple a sewer growth. Would you stipple a sewer growth? I. Sam, I, I am? I can only suspect that I would stipple away. All right. Look at us go. We're just stippling. See, I'm just pressing up and down. And these bristles, this is a number eight Cambridge. It's bristles and synthetic filaments. It's stiff brush, but it holds up against the acrylic really well. The synthetic really helps it keep it together. Adding a little bit of blue. Because, again, I'm trying to make this dark, dark I would be a, sus a suspicious stippler. Would you? A suspicious stippler? I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm just trying to imply. If you played D&D, &D, you know, we're just trying to get the dungeon amount of moss that you would expect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're painting your miniature. Just enough to track the human. Close enough to look in that stream. Yes. Slip and fall. Exactly. <laughs> now I'm going to get a little of that green under my brush again. And some of the zinc white and a little of the Indian yellow. Look at that. And that's going to make this crazy little highlight. There it is on the brush. Not intermixing it. And I'm going to just very lightly, I need a little more yellow because I want it to be green. Come along here and stipple gently. This is now a gentle stippling. Hello, it's a dog. gentle stippling. <laughs> the dog came to visit me. He's like, you are painting. That is time I must sit underneath your easel and bump all the things. Mommy is working, and so therefore... I must visit, protect her from Pennywise, which she certainly would not do. <laughs> she would bark at Pennywise and then like leave. But she would, she would sing of my demise into the night. Now, if you don't own a bristle brush, just, what kind of brush would you suggest? Actually, if you didn't have the bristle brush, I would, you could do this with the sponge. Let me show you. I'm going to squeeze this out. Squeezing it out really well. Trying not to electrocute myself. On my carpet? Uh, well, on the mat. All right. I'm taking a little bit of the green and the yellow, and I'll grab some of the white, and I'll show you here. See? Never feel like there isn't a way to get something done. There is a way to get all things done. All right? There's a way. Now I'm going to get a little of this onto my little sponge anyways, and I can come back and forth along this little line. I'm going to just gently moss it up. Moss it up. Using, what's nice about this edge is they cut sponges, how sponges so straight. Look at, I'm just gonna very softly press up. Look at, I'm just mossing where the, where the bottom has some moss. Moss it, moss it. Taking out that little bit of chalk. Now it's all mossed. Would be, right? You could even say there's some moss here. That's pretty realistic, right? And some moss here. So you can, you know, think about what would what would grow some mold? Well, waterfall would do a pretty good job of that, right? Sewer does a pretty good job of that. So this is a weird piece of fan art because the design is super original. But it's of somebody else's thing, which is Stephen King's Pennywise and based on the movie. So then it's not, right? It's fan art. It's an interesting fun fact. All right. I'm squeezing this out. I'm going to sip some water. And John, I'm gonna, I need to let this dry a little bit. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll wipe off this chalk here. And maybe we'll take a couple questions if you guys have any questions before we put in the shadows into our sewer pipe that Pennywise is traveling down. 
Oh, let's see here. I will go back Stupid up. Stupid macroverse. Stupid macroverse. It's cool. So, it's cool. I'm fine with I it. I got feelings thing... about Randall Flag. I've read the stand like a thousand times. I am ready. Actually, no, I think Captain Trips is going to take me out. No. Okay, sorry. <laughs> are, are you preferring these panels over the wrapped canvas boards? Or the canvases? Yes, because I have uh, something like 2,000 paintings in the back. Mm. And that extra stretcher bar has made it super hard to store. So the panels have been really nice for storage. And I knew many members of my community were also having that problem. So we switched to that. One is not necessarily better than the other. You can frame both of them. You can hang both of them. It's completely doable either way. Actually, a lot of people really like that these work well with command strips. Mm. Fun fact. Now, there were, I guess there were two versions of this movie. Mm -hmm. is there a, did you have a preference on one or the other? Well, it's a weird deal. The TV series. Um, I have this feeling, Stephen King, if you're a Stephen King fan, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I think Stephen King's books are so cerebral. So much of what's happening is in the characters' heads. That sometimes, when they've made miniseries, um, you don't get why people are doing anything. Um, Jack Nicholson being the rare exception of somehow being able to convey this. <laughs> for the most part, it's very hard to understand why characters are doing things if you're not inside their head the way King allows you to be. You're so omnipresent to the story. Um, so I loved Curry. I loved him for the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I honestly was not into him as Pennywise. I w was kind of glad that it wasn't that scary. I was kind of glad it wasn't that in depth. I enjoyed it as a fan, though. This one my daughter made me watch. And uh, Eric Skarsgård, one, what the heck? That guy was so scary. He's, he needs to play, like, another role, so I'm, like, not permanently forever afraid of him because right now if I saw that actor on the street, I might throw a soda and run. Yeah. Like, right at him and just flee. Just, like, self-defense, like, got to go. Um, it really scared me. I think the, the recent movie um, was probably more in keeping with the intention that King had in the book. Huh. My first horror novel ever was Christine. Um, I wasn't allowed to read books like that, and so I had to, like, muck horse stalls and pedal my bike out to the bookstore and secretly buy them and read them under the covers at night. Not really good practice if you're afraid of the dark, which I was. See, you know, Christine, one of those books you can read it one way and see it's a horror story. Read no, another it, way, it's, see it's a love story between a car. He would so be Arnie. Like, right now. It would absolutely be Arnie. But for one possessed car, his life could have de deviated so much. <laughs> so much. Let's paint inside our tunnel. Um, so I've got to highlight, I want to highlight this edge over here because I want to give an explanation for why uh, Pennywise's face has enough light on it to minorly show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, again, a little bit of my green with my number eight bright and put a little of my phthalo blue into it. And I'm going to grab some of my burnt umber. And if I need to, even a little smidge of my Mars black. I'm just thickening, I'm darkening this up, right? And I'm going to come here right about to just above our little waterfall space. I'm going to bring this up and come around. Not all the way to the top. It's, it, I think I'm going to pull it to about this point right here on the tunnel. And then as I come down, I'm going to press a little harder. When I press harder on my brush, it thickens it. Can you see how it sort of thickens it? Yeah. And then I'll softly brush in to imply this perspective on this sewer pipe like you do. <laughs> like I do. Hopefully like you do too. Like we gonna, all do now. Like we all <laughs> Did you make an It's Floats joke? Did he make an It's Floats joke? I I don't know. Did I? Because they float and you'll float. We all float down here. You want I, a balloon? Yeah. Ron? He doesn't. He sleeps through all the movies that I watch. Um. So I'm going to add a little of my zinc white to this yellow and green mixture. And I'm going to come right here on the edge. And I'm just as lightly as I can. I'm going to kiss a smidge. Just a smidge of this color. See how we're doing? Smidging it. Smidgies. Smidges. Smidgies. I wonder, like, if, if King put me in a novel. Well, actually, I don't want to be in a Stephen King novel. No. I'm worried. No, I'd there's no nothing good. Since childhood that all things that are created and thought of, like games and books, exist in an alternate universe. And so um, sometimes they get a little too real for me. Dude. You don't really want to ever tell your doctor that your thinking is that magical. <laughs> Just saying. The they make person, a little note. The only good person in a King novel 
is like the one who is leaving in the first scene and you did never see again. It was like just like, hey guys, and left and like just like <laughs> left and was like, got on an airplane and flew away and you didn't well, ever see that character. You can tell again. you've never read a King novel and no one you meet is coming out okay. It's like, no, just. <laughs> it's not going well for anybody. He's so adorable that he thinks somebody's getting out. Um, it's I think John mixes up coons with King. Is in, no one's like coons. You know, dogs and children are gonna get out. In oh, King, yeah. nobody's getting out. Nobody's gonna escape. That's what I say. Why do you? Why would you want to be in any of his books? Well, I like. I'm a fan. Like I'm. I'm a bumbling fan. Like I actually kind of almost met Stephen King once, but I. <laughs> Freaked out and so therefore did not. I'm gonna load my brush, but I had the opportunity to. Did you ask him to play a prank on people? No, it was much worse than what happened with the Frank. <laughs> much, much worse. I'm taking a little of my black with my number four bright, and I'm I'm loading it on uh my brush. I'm gonna highlight my bricks a little bit. Yeah, I think that's good. Bit. Highlight the bricks. Yes. Oh, okay. Or don't bother Mr. King while he's eating his food, which was good. I don't know. Probably both. Oh. I don't know. He oh. might write you into fiction. It's so weird. Like, no offense to R.R. R. Martin, and if you paint with me, I love you. Thank you for the work. But I could meet you and be fine. I could meet J.K. Rowling and be totally fine, be very chill, be just so cool. But there are certain people I cannot meet and be chill and uh, King turned out to be one of them. But huh. I didn't know he was going to be one until I was in it. I, I imagine that's how it works, probably in general. Like, Do you, you think? You think you're going to be cool, and then you're not cool. You're so not cool. So not cool. So not cool. Do you, have you guys ever seen that? Um, if you see, have, have GIFs, John doesn't ever use GIFs, but there's that GIF of the baby that runs into the room, and then it kind of makes it you and he runs out. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I was like, I'm coming in there, I'm getting my books and everything's done, and whoop, boom, he just looked over there, and I swear it was like a force field, like, propelled me out of the room. I was just like, respect people's space. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little Indian yellow to my burnt sienna. <laughs> just a weird, weird fun fact. Socially awkward around Stephen King. Oh, I, Stan Lee probably would be one. Oh. I don't. I don't think I could survive meeting Stan Lee. I think I would just pass out. Yeah, that that would be pretty. Bad. I pressed too hard on that one, so I'm gonna rinse out. Yeah, I, I couldn't handle it. Could not handle meeting Stan Lee. But weirdly, Lucas, I would be fine. Ah, I think. And I don't. I don't know what that's about. Um, probably something to do with the, um, like, I admire all these artists deeply, but sometimes you have a weird pedestal for people, I think, that happens. So now you see how the there's, a like, a dim glow on everything? We like our dim glow. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Can you? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to um, take my bristle brush again, and I'm going to really kind of try to get as much water as I can out of it. Now I'm going to get the titanium white, and I'm going to load it on here. Right at the tips. I want it to be dry. I don't want it to be really glopped in. I'm going to just pull this down very lightly. This is such soft pressure because I want so much of this to show through underneath. I'm on this edge here, make sure that line is firm. All right. And now I'm going to take a little bit of this titanium white and I'm going to bring just the corner of my brush through the water. See I'm done? Just making little ripples. Oh, yeah. Saying, oh, there's just a little bit of light, but not that much, right? Not that much light, just some. Ooh, now we got some little bit of water, right? You can even say, oh, let's open this up and you can always just make your waterfalls kind of awesome. But it's not a waterfall, it's sewer runoff. I got to remember the <laughs> waterfall. It's not a waterfall, and it's not good, and it's not cool. All right, so we've got that beautiful stream coming off. We've got that going. Another thing we can start putting in is our balloon. We're going to take our black and we're going to put it right into our red, which is drying on me way too fast. What? That happens to me sometimes too. So what you saw me breaking is the skin on the paint. 
That was it drying. I'll have to put some more out. Yeah. Oh, you know what happens. So this makes, you're like, but wait, that says basically burnt sienna. By the way, this is sort of a hack to make burnt sienna if you're out, which is cad red and black will do it. And naphthol red medium and black will do a pretty good version of it too. Um, so I'm going to put this here. And we're going to just paint this all that darker red. Because it's got its little shadow. I'm going to get a little more black into that. But I still want the red in it. I'm going to come to this right side of the balloon. And I'm going to just about a quarter of an inch extra little shadow. A little heavier on the bottom here. See right here at the bottom coming up. I'm going to just round this out. I'm just pulling and flicking. Feathering. Now I'm going to get a little of this right here. And how I like to do my little under balloons is I like to take the corner of the brush and make this little kind of little butt there. Little butt joint. <laughs> butt joint. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull it somewhere in my red. But I haven't rinsed my brush, and that's key because I'm not ready for bright, bright red yet. We just want brighter red than what we had. And I'm going to start highlighting right here on the balloon, not all the way to the edge, more focused towards this center arc right here. How you guys doing? Are you doing good? Really good. I love doing these balloons. It's a really good technique. This will work on any balloon. You can put the balloon in a happy space. You can put the balloon in a scary space. You can put the balloon everywhere, anywhere you need the balloon. I'm going to get some clean water real quick just so we lose this visual confusion. I'm going to come here and clean up my chalk. Like you do. See how we're cleaning up the chalk? Erasing it with water. Yeah. Just with a little bit of water and a brush. That's all it takes to erase chalkboard chalk from your canvas. So, there we go. All right, pushing this out. I have this weird plug in here is what I've got going on. I've got to get it out. I'm going to use my palette knife and then clean that up later. All right, so there's my brighter red, and that's just because I got a lot of black into it. I'm going to get a little more red on here and just pick some of this red black over into it because I don't want to go all the way to my brightest red, but I want to be a brighter red. And I'm going to come right here. And again, I, see, I'm just doing this sort of tap pull, tap pull. It's very rough stroke. And then I'll a little bit at the front of those. I'm going to get some more red red. And just add a little of that through here. Now here's where zinc white is just awesome sauce. I can get a little of the zinc white into my red and it doesn't make it a pink because what I don't want what I don't want right here is a pink. If I use my titanium white I get this weird salmony orange pinkish color and I need this to help my highlight and right here, I'm going to add another one, a little highlight that comes down at the end of that balloon. Need to blend that in a bit, a little bit much. There we go, blending it in. See how you do? How you so, do? So I have a little bit of the zinc white highlight here and a little bit right there. And I'll put a little bit of the brighter red right there. You can then decide what range of red and, you know, black mixed together. And take this sort of to the edge of the balloon just to make sure that this side is a little more visible to the eye than the side that's in shadow. I'm going to come on the edge of my bristles. Make a nice little value move there. Rinsing this out so vigorously, so vigorously. Wow. I'm going to just bring this down. I'm going to paint that in with paint in a second. So I want that there. Now let's get some of our just white on this same brush, this number four bright. And then I'm going to come right in the center. I'm going to just tap lightly a little reflection. A little reflection right there. And then right there. There we're done. Yeah. Now we have a little reflection. Let's get back. Oh, look, we've got a just scary balloon just floating off, don't we? Huh. 
All right, I'm going to sip some water before I get the fog in. John can take a couple more questions. Sure. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. At least you know more oh, about how to yes. paint a Everyone's sewer. Everyone's really enjoying this. There's lots of lots of folks um, who have joined us today. They, uh, they, there, uh, there were some folks asking about how your shoulder's doing, how uh, you're looking forward to your upcoming events, and have you been successful on any of your local search? Okay, so um, shoulder's doing a lot better. Inflammation is down. Um, I'm still being very careful with it. I'm still being cautious. Um, like, this isn't actually that physically hard of a painting to do, so I'm going to be okay here, and everything that we have coming up is fine. So it's just important if you start to feel your joints get inflamed to make sure you get that under in hand before you continue to keep exacerbating it. Um, it's feeling so much better now. And thank you so much for your kind words and your suggestions and your understanding of what happened to my schedule because it was, I don't know how to explain it, but it was like embarrassing to have it go like that for me. It was really hard. Um, the other thing is, is uh, how am I looking forward to pinners? I'm, I'm kind of really looking forward to it. Uh, it's coming up November 2nd and 3rd. I'm going to be in Utah in Salt Lake City at the Pinners Con. And then in Kingman, Arizona, I'm going to be at Panthers Con um, on the 9th, 10th. So it's like those two weekends in November. Uh, it's like just $20 in the ticket to get in. And if you use the code uh, Sherpa, you can get 10% off those tickets. And those tickets let you go to anybody's class. We, we're we trying to have a kit there. I mean, we have all the stuff for the kit and the kits are assembled. So we're just trying to figure out how to get you guys the kit. There's some interesting weird stuff with that. Um, but they let you just go into anybody's class. So uh, even if you were to like come in and not be able to get the kit, don't feel like you couldn't paint. And it's not like you don't see the colors all there in the kit list, right? See, wink, wink, wink. Um, though, I mean, the price on it is like so insanely good that. <laughs> all right. So uh, those things are coming up. And the search has gone really, 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 really well. And I'm super happy about that all the way. All right, let's do the string. Really, really, really well. Really, really well. So this is one of my favorite brushes. This is a number one monogram liner. Um, there's a lot of monogram liners out there. I find for miniature painting, for signatures, for fine lines, you want something that um, has enough belly to hold the paint and is stiff enough to move the paint, especially with heavy body paint. I'm going to take my misting bottle, actually, to give me a hand. And I'm going to miss this area to sort of put some water on the palette rather than try to bring drop after drop to the palette like I sometimes do. And I'm going to get a little bit of my white out and then I'm going to get some of my black into it. And I make this very light gray. Can you see my light gray? And I'm going to come here and I'm going to make a little kind of a whimsical balloon string coming down just like that. So we have that little whimsical balloon string. And we'll let that dry for a second because there's this really cool thing I do where I highlight some of it so it seems like the string is a little more dimensional. And I like that as well. Now I'm going to take my sponge again. And I'm going to get a little of my zincs. My zincs are very nice. And a little blue. Just a smidge of it. And a little bit of black. Blue and black smidged together but the zinc is the key here and i'm going to very lightly push up see how this is where it is on my sponge i'm not pressing in hard i'm just pressing enough to create these little mist warbles and the stroke is like a little s sometimes i like to curve it in because as you know mist and water evaporate in these interesting sort of ways. This is a good way to start to talk about that. You know what's a good way of thinking what that is? Hmm. That is the warm, arid risings of uh, dairy sewage that are coming up off of a nice <laughs> I'm going to wiggle my grate. sponge back and forth while John has a little moment. <laughs> you know, that's got to be, I mean, yeah, that's got to make your nose hair It's pretty burn. special, right, as we go? Oh, my gosh. And I I'm going to come right up here, too. 
Did nobody smell Pennywise coming? Where they're just like, dude, take a shower. I'm going to just, I don't want to go too far because I have to, I have to have room. Let me show you. I need to make sure that I've got room right here for the face. So I don't want to come up yet too far. I'm going to do a little bit. You can come back here and you can definitely improve what you've got. Pull that up. Now, one trick is sometimes when you get a little bit of the green and then the zinc white, it makes this sort of like Tommy knocker glow. All right, there you go. So, like human batteries. Sorry. <laughs> ah. And I like to make sure that right here, kind of where this is before, you know, I kind of move this into the stream because I want to hide the stream a little bit. The stream has a little bit of that, and then I sometimes get, I'm going to get a little bit of my blue. See if this has got that feel right there. See how we're doing? I'm just using the corner. Look, just the corner. Wow. Well, how's that doing? Oh, we got some, we got some fogginess happening there. Some fogginess happening there. Now, I can get a little bit of my, um, a little more of my zinc. I'll layer that in. Just make sure that I've got some pulling up. Clowns in the dairy sewer fog. Just one. Just the one really clown. awful one. And not always a clown, just currently a clown. It's whatever's terrifying. I think of fear is like I, its sort of version of veal. Maybe, maybe that's what it is, is that I'm terrified of a dairy sewer <laughs> you're just like i can't handle the dairy sewer <laughs> all this is fine but the sewer part of this is not okay for me and everything that it represents okay okay you know mad respect i get it you're going through a thing i think what we're gonna do well let me uh do my highlight and then we're gonna oh, yeah. switch to the up close picture of pennywise okay i'll get that ready bit. And um, I'm going to just get my pure white so I can highlight my string, and I'll show you what I do. I get my brush right into the pure white, and I'm going to come and find just a couple spots on my string to add that brighter reflection. There we go. So some of it is dark, and some of it is light. And it gives it just a little bit of twist there, as John looks for what should be our up close version of Pennywise. Yeah. Puts it there. And I guess I'm going to stick. Oh, I have my up close print out too. Can you grab that? Yeah. Well, I'm grabbing that. If we've got any picture, uh, questions, we can ask. Oh, yeah. I'll go run and answer those. Do, 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 do. Where did the Sherpa go? Now, definitely oh, going to use my vision enhancers now and missed my palette. Missed it. Missed it really good. They were asking, is there a uh, age limit on your classes in pinners? Um, you'll have to check the website. I personally didn't put any up there, so whatever pinners. A lot of this is pinners and not us, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? Yes. So we're their guest. We are a presenter. We're just trying to follow their rules. Like, they gave us an hour for the class. Um. But I'm going to be at the booth. I'm going to be painting. I'm going to be there. I'm going to have, like, my area set up for watercolor. I'm going to have my area set up for acrylic. Uh, I'm going to be there on both days at the event. Um, and if you get the kit that has the class on video and a step-by-step -step and all the materials required and everything you need to succeed at it. So we did this so, like, no matter what happened to Pinners, you guys are hooked up. If that makes sense. There we go. Anyways. That silly grinning clown. Not silly. Not cute. Not silly. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get into my smaller brushes now. And that's really because uh, this is a very, very small space. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my zinc. I'm going to put some more zinc out when I find it. And I'm going to begin with just my zinc and black. And I'm going to start sketching in some of the base shape of uh, the face. So this is a number two Cambridge, and I'm gonna just load this up 
with a little white and black. And I'm going to make a mid gray to work with. And I'm going to come right here. I'm going to just make sure I've got a little line there. There's a cheekbone that pops out, um, so I'm going to pull this across. And then, of course, we need to make some room for that smile. Pull that in. Now, this part of the face has a little more light on it, and then we have a little nose space. Some of this comes up here. We don't see it as being there. And then we have, I'm going to put my glasses on. That'll help me a lot. Hopefully help you a lot. So I just want to point out some things. First, we're going to be looking for this line along here. So you can kind of see that mid-range gray. And I'm going to be building up this space through here, right, where this is in light. And there's a small little space right here in light. So these are places that I'm focusing on. But really, it's all quite dark because he's lurking. So it's very interesting to do something that's lurking and also that's iconic in people's minds. I'm going to just make sure that I'm building this in. And you remember, in this case, I erase with black. Right? So yeah. I'm going to be erasing with my black. And I can start to put the, the rough coming out. But there's our rough. And this isn't really showing all that well either because of the lighting. It's actually showing up pretty good here. I no, no, I mean like we shouldn't see it that much. Oh, yeah, oh, I thought you were worried that they could see him. No, you, you can see what you're painting. Let me just make sure we've got this right here. And I may even move my other little guy over here. I want to see both of them. See if them? that makes sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. sense. Why would you want to see them? Get my references in. So, oh, skinning. What happened there is the skin on the palette and then it delaminated. That's no good. Not that bad, but yeah, it's not ideal. Not that bad, but not ideal. Not that bad, but not ideal. There we go. And you can even, you know, kind of put, use your brush here, see how I'm doing, to get some more of this little fogginess up as a basis. Now I can come here and get a little more zinc on my brush. I can just make sure that this outer cheek has a little bit of a next level highlight. Comes down a small amount down here. I'm surprised at how quickly this is coming in. Yeah, it, it it's one of those pieces that looks kind of complicated. and I mean, it is, but also it's not. I, I meant to tell you when we were 10 minutes to the hour, we're about eight minutes, uh, seven minutes now. So, I mean, yeah. you're really, not that they, we're worried about it maybe under an hour, but it's just, uh, you're really. It's just one of those long. pieces that it starts to, starts to work. Now I'm going to start right here. There's a nice shadow of the cheek, right? And then we come up here and there's a little bit of one above the lip. I got a little aggressive with that shadow, but that's okay because again, how do we erase? We come back with black. Right? I can even come back with black up into that cheek space. And I'm going to wipe off my brush with the towel, come back and soften that. You know what I'm doing? Yeah. So at some point, it starts to even really kind of come out of the dark. I've got my little black here. Got to bring that out of the dark. And I'm going to be getting into one of my number two filberts as well. Just working that in. And let's kind of shade in this part of the ocular space. This is, you know, if you're doing Venom, this is real similar to how you build any of these characters. You know, you just build them slowly and a little bit at a time, right? I'm going to kind of fade this right here. My brush, I'm getting all of my Mars black. I'm going to make sure that I'm, you know, building him out of a dark space. What freaks me out is how handsome Eric Skarsgård is, but is yet so super scary. 
All right, so I've got my number two uh, filbert. You can find a lot of these. This is this is my actual the art sherpa, but you can find these small sort of miniature filberts like in miniature painting. Um, even if you're out of them in the fine art section of the store, oftentimes they'll be in another section because a lot of us like to use them a lot. So I'm going to get a little of my um, kind of yellow here and a little of my zinc white, and I'm going to make this sort of off yellow, and then I'm going to get a little black into it, and it's like this yellow gray. And I'm going to get. And I'm going to come into here and I'm going to start working in the eye, which I mean, we're all sort of familiar with the almond. So let's leave a little room on the ocular cavity on this side and we've got to leave a little bit in there. And just come right here and remember, what can we do if we get too big? We can erase. We're going to very gently put that in. And then we're going to come right across here, very level, and start to put in just a smidge of this space. Then you're going to get a little of your black on your brush. And I'm going to come right over the top. Anything I need to sort of shape in or Think about them. I'm going to start to do that. It doesn't need to be perfect at this stage, but knowing that you're not doing big areas can sometimes help you keep from getting overreaching. Let's put in the nose right here. So if you think about a face, even on Pennywise's very distorted features, in the head, right, if there's a chin and there's top of the head, the eyes are halfway down the head. And the nose is in general halfway between the eyes and the chin, right, the end of the nose. And then the mouth is again halfway between the nose and the chin. And we distort our monsters slightly off of those proportions. And that's one of the things that makes them feel scary. But sometimes using those as our secret weapon when we're painting characters can really help us get through, even if we don't normally paint characters. Because remember, monsters can have uh, smiles that are bigger than they should be. Right. They can do a lot of things that they're not supposed to do. So I'm going to come right here, and that was my red and black. I'm doing the same thing I did with the blend. I'll start this nose. I'm going to bring the nostril right there. Bring that back. I'm going to come down there. And again, if I if it gets away from me, I can tip it back with black. So I'll come and get a little bit of the black on my brush. And I'll come right underneath here, tipping it back. And I often like to put a little bit of a shadow that I talk about right here. I'm going to get my red and black in there, but that line's going to help me kind of just slightly imply it, if that makes sense. And that is a bit of a shadow. Now I've got the upper lip and the lower lip. Lower lip is pretty far down. It's right about here. And it's going to come in a line up to here. It becomes full down midway to the nose, but we don't see it much past this. You can just dry brush a little bit towards the right. Dipping in water and reloading my brush so the flow of my paint is pretty decent. I'm going to bring this here. I think I'm going to wait a minute to go all the way up the face because I want to do some more shading right there and around these little features. Guys, it'll help. So I'm going to get a little of my black on my brush and then I'm going to get a little bit more white on here. And I'm going to start trying to pull, if you have too much paint, just tap it off on a, and this is zinc. This is the other power of zinc. If you guys are like, why would you zinc? Right now, this, this right here this is why sometimes we zinc. I'm going to bring it up a little bit to where the tear duct's going to be. Again, I've got a little black on here, not too much. I'm into the zinc. I've got too much and I can see it there. The bridge of the nose is going to have a bit of a highlight, more than the rest. 
you can softly work that down. Right, you can come up a smidge up above the brow. You can put a little bit there. And again, if you ever have too much paint, you can wipe off on a towel, wipe off on your finger. Little transition, little adjustments make big impact. Every little adjustment. Don't rush, don't feel like you're on a speed train. Even if I'm painting very quickly, you don't rush, right? You're gonna come here and you're gonna find your pace. I'm gonna get this part of the brow. Slightly highlighted. I'm gonna come back here where there is that little smile mark. Come down a little bit under the nose. We're doing pretty good, aren't we? Now let's get our black onto our brush again. I had one drop of water to improve the flow. I'm under this nose. Oh, two drops of water. Ooh. So what happened there is that um, I dipped my brush deeply into the water. And on detail brushes, the water will be like a wick, like, uh, like a, a pen, and it will come down in a delayed thing and sometimes hit your painting. And that was just me swishing too hard with too much water, which is why the other reason why sometimes I'll, I'll miss the palette to avoid that. Too much swishing by the too Sherpa. Much, too much there. So Get I'm back your swishing to, under control. I'm back to right here, and I'm going to just tip this a bit, and I'm going to come here and let's say we... Just a little bit bigger and more pronounced. Under there. Then I'm going to come to the midpoint under the nose. See how we're doing? Now, right now, an interesting thing happens because at this stage, it feels like almost that the nose is a little bit flattened out. So it's in the shading that we get the shaping on the nose done. That's an important thing to know if you didn't know that. Now on the eyes where I had the yellow and white and black, I'm gonna actually get a little more black in there to make an even darker gray. And in this outer corner, even more. In this outer corner, I'm gonna make sure that that has a little bit of a shadow in it. And this right here has a little bit of a shadow in it. A weird deal but it's because we come back with like these yellow highlights later to help the eye pop. So I just swished out my brush and I wiped it to make sure that I didn't get you know anything crazy and I'm coming back and, and softening these transitions because again little changes does what? Big impact. I'm working my tear duct. If I lose it which I just did I go back into my black and now that I missed in my palette, I'm not having to deal with such issues with the such issues with the drops. I'm going to come here and I'm going to make the, the tear duct a little more delicate. And come here with the black a little stronger. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and tap out a darker shadow right there. I'm sure, this is pretty pretty well defined right here. From there underneath I'm going to make sure that this is trimmed pretty well as well now let's get I haven't rinsed my brush because I don't want white white yet I just want lighter variances of gray until I finally do my titanium white highlights so we're going to come back here again add a little bit of a bridge and come right there that and then up over this part of the apple. If it's too thick, I wipe off my brush. And I'm going to use the edge and bristles to sort of softly fold that out. Oh, that's doing really well. Now, I'm going to get my Indian yellow. And I think I'm going to grab some of my burnt umber. You can even get a little bit of your black. But I really want it to be Indian yellow. But at first, I've got to start with something that's not bright because the bright has to be fairly visible. 
We want to make these eyes look like they're glowing in the dark. Some right there. There we go. Starting to put those eyes glowing in the dark. And we're going to get one more detail. Um, I'm probably going to finish it with this here. I could do the liner, but I'm probably going to do that, that level of detail to get it all the way out. Now, as I'm going, I'm going to get back into the black and the red. So let's get, it should be visibly red, but darkened by the black. And we're using the misting technique to get it where it's going to flow off my brush easily, but not do a drop down and come and bring down this line right here. So I'm going to come under here. All right, and then we'll bring this little lip down just a little smidgy smidge more, a little hungrier. Now we've got the beginning of that, don't we? Yeah. I'm going to get a slightly brighter red. So it's still got a little of the black in it, but it's slightly brighter. I'm going to come right here. On this part of the lip, I'm going to just highlight it a bit. Come along here at the cheek. Not all the way red, just slightly redder. And then right here at the nostril. And then again, on this tip of this nose. And we see that now. Is the face starting to come out? Can you guys see the face? Oh yeah. So now we get into this fussy little bit of kit. This is my little three over zero. You could do a, a one. I'm gonna get into my titanium white. And I'm gonna work out my eye here. A little more black. And I love water on the palette because, again, I'm not having to work for it so much. Here. Just pull this in. I'm just creating that, that level of color. All right. Let's get um, a little of our black and a little of our yellow together. Water to help the flow. We're going to come as carefully as we can under the lid, creating a dark outer rim. See that? Yeah. Same thing here. Right along there. Just barely there. Barely there. Rinsing vigorously. I'm going to mist. Get a little more black, just straight black. All right, I'm playing now. I'm gonna come under here with the oh. straight black up over the eye, and then I'm gonna very carefully come down into this pupil. And I do this little tapping thing so I can paint small amounts at a segment. Come over this. See how it's just dark and straight. That's to be amazing. Like glowy and threatening and not okay. All right, let's get some fresh super cad while we're letting all that have a minute. And we're going to come to the nose. And right here, we're going to tap some bright cad. And then right here in the lip, I'm going to tap another little bit of bright cad. See how it's just bright? It's okay if we put a little bit just there at the cheek. That's so super bloody, super hungry, a little bit scary. I'm going to get my number two filbert again, and I'm going to get some of my just white. And I may give it just a smidge of black so it's, it's off white, but it's still pretty white. I'm going to come right here, top of this nose, just a little bit. And a little bit right here. And the inside of that wrinkle there, and the outside. Of that cheek. See how he's doing. Back up. 
All right, doing pretty good. I think it looks pretty amazing. All right, I'm gonna soften this just a smidge by just doing this little bit of tapping and blending and kind of adjusting like you do. You know, you gotta do that a little bit. And then under the eye, get a little more of this and you're gonna come under this eye. Just underneath and a smidge right there. A glint. So, you know, when you're reading horror stories and they're like a glint in the eye? Uh huh. That's what they mean is glinting. Predators have a glint in their eyes. Sometimes all you catch before things go really pear shaped for you, I'm gonna get some titanium white into my Indian yellow, is that glint. We're nearly done, by the way, guys. This is looking really amazing. So I'm going to get my Indian yellow. I've got my titanium white. I'm going to get it on the brush I have the most control over, which is this three over zero. I'm going to come into the eye underneath here. Tapping, tap, 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 tap. Just that bright color right there. And then a little bit of that right there. That's See great. the face? Now, can you, can you do me a favor? Yeah. And tilt that towards RoboCam for me. This way? Oh, that's great. I'm going to zoom right in here real quick so we can get a nice, we can take the, just the focus there. Perfect. Let's zoom out real quick. Okay, it's asking. so funny. I was like, wow, it feels out of focus. And I realized I'm still wearing my glasses and I'm looking at the TV. <laughs> 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 Can't see that far away. <laughs> that turned out great, Cinnamon. He's not done? He's almost done now. We're nearly done. I'm going to get this. This is my the number two cabbage again. I'm going to get some of my zinc and I'm going to come to the center of his little clown ruff. Oh, ruff yeah, ruff. the clown ruff. They were just wanting to see his face straight on. So I wanted to make sure I showed everybody. Oh, that clown ruff. Highlight some. Not all. Just some. enough to make him say hello. Enough to make him say hello. Enough where you're like, I'm seeing something. My, I'm actually not allowed to have this painting out at all. My son doesn't like it, mm. and it scares him, and so I have to face it the other way because he doesn't like that the clown is looking at him. Get a little, uh, little highlight there in his We're going to highlight fog. some of this, you know, kind of mist. <laughs> right? Highlight some of the mist here. That's the titanium white and a little zinc. And see, again, I'm still just doing the S-curves, right? And you're going to do a little bit of that there, down here, just a little bit, if you need it. I don't think we do. And then you're going to rinse out. You're going to get your detail brush. You're going to find a spot, if you're willing to take ownership that you did this. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? This turned out great. And you're going to come down here in the corner, and you're going to give this little signature. And this is one of the one times, like, I'm going to do it in the Indian yellow and white, but you could sign this one red and it would be okay. It would go complement the piece. It would complement the piece enough to. This turned out great. So that's how you would paint it. It. From Stephen King's novels. Pennywise, the dancing clown. My most favorite, least favorite of all of King's villains that I have ever ever read of any of his books i honestly i would rather i know he's more dangerous but i'd rather deal with randall flag just would um but regardless i hope you're having a really good wonderful halloween i hope you're enjoying fan art it's made a little more simple so no matter where you're at in your art skills you can make fan art too because there's nothing like celebrating the books and the movies and the things that you love be good to yourselves be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.